In part one of this series, I put together the tabletop. In this video, we will explore the process of making the legs. The vertical structure is formed by some nickel-plated steel tubing. The main reason for using them was definitely not the price. The plating on these was blemished, and they did not make it into the lamps that they were made for. That's the story of how $500 worth of parts became some accidental table legs. You could buy similar unfinished tubing for about $2 a piece. Other than this design, a few concepts were developed for the 3D printed hubs. This version looked really good and worked even better, but it was a bit too bulky for this purpose. The other designs moved on to the testing phase. Table legs obviously need to be as strong as possible, and testing is needed. For test 1, each piece was mounted on a 2x4, then clamped in the vise. The minimalist design has a single component. The industrial style mount has two. One part mounts to the table and the other gets attached to the tube using a threaded rod and nut. Those two halves get screwed together. Using some 7.5 pound steel weights, each part was tested to failure. The first failed at about 22 pounds. The second also failed at about 22 pounds. Both sheared off in virtually the same location. The more simple design requires less material and print time, so it moved on to round two. Using the same design language, the other components were developed. A triangulated structure seemed to be the strongest and most practical approach. All the parts are locked together using hollow threaded rod and a few nuts. Torture test number two was done on the whole leg. This version didn't have any screws in the bottom, so the initial part positions were marked. One by one, steel plates were added to the leg. About 83 pounds later, I ran out of weight. That's when I got a little help from a friend. The foot did almost fall off, but not before the tubes bent significantly. The weakest point is still the top side. Black was the color of choice, so one more test followed the big one. Likely due to this PETG having more pigment in the mix, it was not quite as strong as the orange. Regardless, with a single leg holding back well over 100 pounds of shear force, I was not too concerned about moving forward with a slightly weaker material. One at a time, the 20 parts went on the printer. Because the topside joint was the only point of failure, that part was printed solid. Mostly. The rest of the parts were printed with infill. To get the inside structure of the central joint, some custom supports were designed. These also happened to create a good location for garbage collection, and there was a lot of garbage. The orange material printed a lot better than the black did. There was blobbing and stringing that ended up all over the place, and many failed prints were the result. All manner of different print settings were attempted, but with few positive results. Doing a lot of perimeters seemed to produce the nicest looking parts and the least failed prints. Being that this was one of my first attempts at 3D printing, the learning curve was quite significant. The PETG blobbing and stringing was also an issue at assembly. The inside of the holes needed to be reamed out with a drill bit to allow insertion of the tubes. Doing this by hand with a cut-proof glove worked well. Drilling into them stripped out too much plastic. With all the parts ready to go, it was time for assembly. All the tubes and their corresponding threaded inserts were glued together one day earlier. Step 1. Insert the 18-inch tubes into the center hub. The foot is then applied, loosely. The fit on everything is as tight as possible, so the only way to fully see these was with a rubber mallet. Some screws go in the bottom and connect with the threaded reducer. The 12 inch set of tubes was then threaded into the central hub. First by hand and then ratcheted until tight. My assistant demonstrates installation of the upper threaded assembly. The printed component remains floating on the tube until the leg is attached to a tabletop. This concludes the assembly portion of the video. Mounting to the butcher block went smoothly. The tabletop is a little soft, so the nine screw points help to spread the load and reduce the possibility of any tear out. 
These may not be the best looking set of legs I've ever seen, but they do make a solid table. One of the key takeaways from this project was everything it taught me about printing strong, functional parts. Just because you can print solid, doesn't mean you should. I hope you enjoyed part 2 of the 3D printed 3D printer table. If you'd like to see version 2, let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this.